Okay, so then it's again my pleasure to talk. Uh, this time about the virtual project on the history of ALD in perspective about the past and the present and the final steps. All right, we already know this ALD principle and also that it has been discovered twice. Uh, here's first about the first discovery, molecular layering, molecule Jarnajana Slaivani in uh, St. Petersburg, Soviet Union, to my understanding, 1965 is the first, first publication. And these pictures come from the essay by Maligin et al. in chemical vapor deposition. These are the two, two names related to the invention. And here's the, uh, also, um, the invention was related to the framework hypothesis of Aleskovsky. And here is a picture that represents that. So the framework and the reactive sites. Another picture uh, just describing how, how the work went in St. Petersburg. This is Professor Maligin, who is there in the audience now, and he's a uh, powder ALD reactor from 1982. So a lot of this research was related to powders, um, but also thin film work on wafers was, was being carried out. Uh, 1974, Espoo, Finland, uh, Tuomo Suntola invented atomic, uh, ALD under the name Atomic Layer Epitaxy, and there the goal was to make flat panel displays, and here is an example of uh, those in Helsinki Vanta Airport. This was, this was a prototype that was actually used as a flight display board for, I think, 15 years, and uh, Tuomo Suntola got the Millennium Technology Prize for his uh, achievements in 2018. And uh, when this was given, uh, the Russian inventors of ALD were no longer alive, so they could not be considered for the prize. Then to the um, virtual project on the history of ALD. So this was launched in 2013 at the International ALD Conference. Um, this is from the website characterizing the project. So VPHA, it's an open collaborative effort. Goal is to clarify open questions related to the early history of ALD. Um, it's based on voluntary efforts. Anyone interested is welcome to join. And it's really important that all activities are made in an atmosphere of openness, respect and trust. What we do is we try to collect together all early ALD works, we read them, and we uh, write our own short comments on them and then we share these. So we create a, a big collected document that's then uh, describing the early ALD works. And of course, the reason why we need to or want to do this is that this dual invention is still not well known in the scientific ALD con community. It was certainly not in 2013 and still not, I would argue. A little bit of like the prehistory of, of the virtual project. So what, what paved the way to this uh, history project? And this is kind of my, my personal story. I defended my doctoral thesis in 2002 from Helsinki University of Technology, ESPO. When I wrote my thesis, I was aware of molecular layering as, as one um, well name for ALD, basically. So um, what I did not know at that time is where it had originated from and when. So I did just write the same thing as everybody, uh, you know, my, my predecessors, that the atomic layer epitaxy was the original um, term. Um, also in 2002, a chapter, a, a, a massive book chapter was published on ALD and there also, molecular layering was um, indicated as an alternative name to ALD, and there, there was a comment that this dates back to old Russian literature. There was no single reference given so that I could find more, but I, I can say that this, this raised my curiosity. I went to IMEC in Belgium as a postdoc, and there somebody brought to my desk, and I don't know who, I still don't know who, a copy of this uh, comment, early work on atomic layer deposition cited. And this has been written by Maligin and Smirnov, and Maligin is now the chair of this, this conference. And here they were telling about the, the Russian invention and giving some references also, and 
what was really uh, curious for me is that a company chooses not to respond formally at this time, but maintains the correctness of the statements made in the article. Wow, this was really, really getting my eyebrows up. So um, I really, I, I kind of uh, got to have two research questions or questions. So is it really the same technique? And is are the molecular layering works older than ALE? I really had to find out. And what I did, I contacted Malivin um, and asked to get some copies of those papers that were mentioned. And I got a mix, mixture of uh, sheets that were of four different papers in Russian. And it was like a puzzle for me. I solved it. I didn't give up. And then I, I started finding out more and the answers were yes and yes. And I was at IMEC and I collected lots of literature and I realized that this kind of never ends, that I always find more. So at some point I had to stop and I wrote a review article where uh, Table 1 then has some Soviet Russian in ALD investigations. So when I wrote this, I understood that it's not all. It's a lot and it's not all. And I also there said, the starting point of ALD is somewhat controversial, depending on the source, the credit of first realizing the principles of ALD is given to different groups. And um, I considered this review, in a way, my personal public apology to the world, because I had myself missed the molecular layering origin in my own thesis. And of course, I wanted to make it a good thesis. And, and I, well, this is how I cleared my confidence. I had a feeling that I had done my part. And I actually hoped that the world would continue, that the ALD community would notice this. I thought it's a big, big thing, and I hope that others would find out more and that the view would change, but it didn't. And there, here's another review written five years later by Stephen George, which has become the world's most cited uh, review on ALD, and it clearly just states the story as so long earlier already that atomic layer epitaxy is the origin and there's no mentioning of molecular layering. Um, gradually after this the literature started having some some uh, notes of the molecular layering but then also misleading excuses trying to explain why why these works haven't been cited. Uh, for example, that they were only in Russian. Well, that's not true. And I would like to mention that already in the proceedings of this 1990 conference in Finland, there is a contribution in English by Alaskovsky and Dost, and that also mentioned hafnium oxide. So, so these excuses, they are just excuses. Uh, the work hasn't been done to, to find out. It became clear that work is still needed to clarify the early history of ALD. And this is really I know that it's too much for one person, and it's also not a single person's responsibility. I have done a lot for that, but I decided I don't do anything anymore alone. But um, I made a question in LinkedIn, and this raised a lot of discussion, and this basically led to that we opened this VPHA in summer 2013. And we thought that we'd be quick and we get it finished, <laughs> by the end of the year, but here we are, eight years later, still working on it. Scope and achievements. So um, basically, the core activity really is that we want, we would like to generate a complete list of early ALD publications. This is needed for, for like common understanding, a common factual basis. And then, then we read this and uh, write short summaries or comments of, of those and, and share this. And so that's the sharing is, is the third thing. And uh, we'd like to have at least three comments per article. And we have a limitation to the scope that we do this only until 1986, because that after that we can't really consider that any more early. The current status is that we have 366 publications listed we have received 938 comments and we would need 281. There have been almost 80 contributors already from more than 20 countries. We have produced four journal articles, scientific journal articles, um, and then 
attend presentations at different conferences. There's a website, there's a blog. That's basically by my, my personal thing. We have updated Wikipedia. There are these evolving files that we keep on working with, which are available to anybody in real time and also indirectly re related to this. Uh, there has been an exhibition in Finland in 2014, or 40 years of ALD in Finland, and the Millennium Technology Prize uh, to Suntula that also is an indirect product by VPHA. And now I'm working on an uh, open learning site for AOD at the Alto Systems. Here is an example of what we have produced. So we have collected together in one file information of doctoral thesis on ALD worldwide. And here um, USSR and Russia is the first one, then there's Finland, and you really see how the how ALD has been spreading in the world. We should update this. This is only until 2018, so we should we should again do an effort to gather information. Final steps. So we have booked significant progress, yes, but the work is not completed yet. And the core activity, the reading and commenting, that's not completed yet. Um, we still have about 170 articles that miss one or two comments, and there's a massive amount in Russian. And, well, we would then also need uh, people from the Russian ALD community to actively participate in the reading effort so that we get this done, also so that it's not too much work for one single person. And with this presentation at the ALD Russia 2021, the final stage of VPHA is basically launched. And we are planning to start a facilitated reading round, reading and commenting round, likely in November 2021. And we want to finalize the reading and commenting work. There is an optional thought that we could write a review article jointly, but that's going to be really difficult, so I keep this as optional. And um, we invite all researchers worldwide who are interested in ALD and especially in its early roots to volunteer, to work together in VPHA, to build together fact-based understanding of the early works early ALD works, and especially we invite the Russian-speaking ALD researchers to, to volunteer from Russia, from anywhere in the world. And yeah, because of course, when you need to write Russian, uh, read Russian um, publications, write in English, it's this combination of, of language skills that is very important. So if you are interested, please contact uh, us by sending email to info at vphald.com and then we have you in our email list and when, when things start happening, you'll be informed. Спасибо за внимание. Есть вопросы? I want uh, once more say uh, thank you very much, uh, Rika Boren, for this very interesting uh, historical project. It is very useful for uh, young people, young researchers in LD. I think. I think it's yes. Thank, Th you. thank you for the thanks and the appreciation and for the collaboration because, of course, it's very important that you also participate in this without. The people from St. Petersburg, we would never be able to complete this. But I, I find this very important.